Hello everyone, how are you guys doing today? Just uh, giving a little shout out here just to a couple friends and viewers. Just let people know that we're online. Has anyone got a, a model to paint? Something that they wanna maybe paint along with? Let's see here. All right, got that. Let's see, that's taken care of on that one. And just a little bit of that there. Good stuff, almost finished. Sorry about that for those who are starting in with the recording there. Yeah, it's a small little channel. I have to let my uh, friends and family know that we're going online. Cool, all right. So, today, uh, less sniffly, which is good. That's always a huge bonus. Allergies are pretty under control today. So, um, today what we are going to be painting, or what I'm painting, if you have one, you can paint along with it, I'm going to be covering the um, giant ape from WizKids, here we go, get that in the picture. So I've, in the past, I've painted these apes from Reaper Mini. Um, this one I obviously kind of gave up after doing just a little bit of basing. Uh, this one's got a lot more foliage to it, so a little bit more lively. Um, so we're going to be going with a similar process with this one. Um, I've What I've done is I've given it a zenithal priming and went over um, in Photoshop and did some uh, eyedropper tool work to use references of real gorillas to get um, just a little bit of a palette so we can start off with here. So I'm just going to open that up off in the side. You guys won't be seeing that there, but I uh, just know that I am going to be using some references because that's going to really help with getting a, um, you know, a bit of a good look with it. So given that the eyes, as always, are one of the smallest features. I'm just going to put go into Google here and just uh, find some girl eyes. Now, one thing to make note of is you typically never really see the um, there's no whites to their eyes, so to speak. So I'm just going to go into a window capture here, and we're just going to add a new source. And what do I have that? That's just Google Chrome. Um, so I'll minimize this here. And try to share with that, that with you guys. There we go. So you can kind of see here, oh, that is a huge picture. Um, so this is a just a little bit of an example of what you would expect to see. So this is what I am using here. Now I will get rid of that. Don't need that for the whole stream. Hey, Mikey, it's the ape stream. Waffle Wednesday ape stream. How you doing, buddy? The monk. No, uh, no monkeying around in this stream. Ho, 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 ho. Yeah, everyone unsubscribed. Let's see here. So, how are you doing today? How was work? Uh, collect some of my brown colors. 
Hey, Keith, how are you? Glad to see ya. So, just uh, gonna start off with some uh, gorilla eyes. Do the smallest, most frustrating detail so that I can be a little more forgiving for myself around the um, here. Because if I, you know, go outside of the boundary, that's okay. I'm gonna paint over it anyways. Had an easy day. Excellent. Excellent. Always glad to hear that. What color would I call that? Jeez, that is. Like their eyes are like black. Just with the uh, brown in them. I'd almost say maybe like it's kind of like this color here. <sighs> Alright, so. I think I've already got a little bit of that in my wet palette, actually. So that's handy. So, with my super tiny brush, eat some tasty paint. It's not paint on there yet. All right. So we're gonna go in here. Thanks for joining in today, guys. As always. Yeah, I gotta say, uh, whenever there's these larger models, I'm always like, ah, oh, yes, larger model. That means bigger eyes, right? Uh, not terribly bigger. So, um, just using the reference of the photo I used earlier, um, mentioning just that the the quote unquote white of gorilla eyes is actually more of a super dark gray. So now I'm gonna go in with um, some fur brown. I would ask if you guys are painting anything else today to, to go along, but um, I know Keith doesn't really paint minis. And Mikey, I know Steven does, but I don't know if you paint. <laughs> yep, can't say the sniffles are all the way gone. Let's try to blow this off here. Yeah, I should probably wait for that to dry off before I uh, tackle anything there but you know in the meantime what we can do is we can give this gorilla some teeth so using Google again gonna go in nah don't paint well, that's all right he can paint vicariously through me here yeah my arm is gone and mucked things up there Excellent. So, gonna go to Google, find a nice photo. Look at the inside of the gorilla's mouth. If I get a mini, I give it to Stephen. Yeah, that's totally fair. All right. So, they've got not bad teeth here, but uh, I'll reach through my workstation again. I'm gonna grab some teeth just while we wait for everything else to dry. Yeah, man, I am. Of course, I have like all of my paints, like past the microphone, past just everything here. I've got pale yellow. I've got a khaki here. It's a good starting place for teeth. All right. And already you can see, uh, I'm trying to use this as a collection of where all of my, uh, the paints that I'm gonna be planning on using um, so here we've got all of the grays um, and even a little bit of a, a mummy's robe for a highlight there. So we're going to use that for gorilla skin and fur. Um, we're going to use some dark stone and some fur brown for the eyes. And going to use these three colors for the teeth. These are typically the colors I use for teeth. My sister's partner has a 3D printer, so I get a lot of cheap minis. 
That's dope. I, th I can't remember if you had mentioned that before and or if I'm just uh, forgetful here. Oh, I'm seeing I actually need to rehydrate my wet palette a bit. Um, I tried doing that earlier, but it looks I'm seeing there's a little bit of an air bubble underneath, so I'll be right back. Sorry about that. Disappeared forever. Oh, got blue paint on my thumb while I was doing that. Don't want to get that on the model. But yeah, I, you mentioned, I, th I think that before, um, did you say if it was a resin printer? Is it a F, um, what is it, FDM uh, printer? I can't remember what they're called. Uh, the ones that feed plastic through and melt it progressively. Ideally, I really want to get my hands on a um, a UV resin printer, but yeah, you know, need to have the space to get a printer. I mean, they're pretty compact, but there's just a lot to them. There's safety and stuff. Ah, yeah, resin. Yeah, no, resin printers are just phenomenal for um painting your miniatures let's see here there we go um you get so much detail out of it and they're just so much cheaper if you do it that way now normally for the inside of a mouth i usually start off with a crusted sore color um but looking at my references, the inside of a gorilla's mouth is very pink. So if anyone wants to see the image I'm referring to, I'll just plug that in here. It's just a Google image. Oh, there we go. Oh, Kira Forge. Yep, yep. Kira Forge is dope. Um... Yeah, no, there's so many talented people uh, that put up 3D models. By the way, how's the audio, everyone? Is the music uh, too loud? Is it, um, you know, a decent? Where, where, where do we stand on the volume? Sounds good on my end. Perfect. That is what I like to hear. And you can hear that there's music today, right? Or do I need to turn the music up? Here are my sound testers, my sound crew. Yep, yep, okay, perfect. Yeah, I've got it a little bit quiet. I'm facing a little bit of a challenge when I'm trying to uh, record the audio. Or not record it, but um, sometimes, because I have to install a um, thing called iShow so that it can capture the desktop audio, but what ends up happening is it seems that it captures Streamlabs. And because I have Spotify feeding in to Streamlabs, the same audio ends up getting caught um, specifically for my music. So when I'm playing it, I don't really hear it, 
but there's just a slight like reverb. So when I pause the music, you can hear a little bit of a, a very subtle echo. Um, so it's a little annoying for me, but um, as long as it's not, no one else can really hear it, then that's perfect. I'm, I'm cool with that. So yeah, you know what? I think I'll start the inside of that mouth possibly right now. And I'll go in through uh, different layers. So instead of going, because I'm seeing how pink everything is, I'm gonna go in with a murderous magenta. Oh, there we go. Uh, this was a paint that I used very briefly for uh, Lord Pulgasaur, or uh, as Mikey calls him, Lord Bulbasaur. So let's add a little bit to the palette. <laughs> So on Friday, I'm hoping to get a, another, basically like one of these uh, arm um, for my desk so I can mount the camera on. So I can get a little bit more of an over the shoulder, but this what I've got here, this is working out nicely, just for the meantime. Because like right here, you can see like when I'm trying to paint it, it if I, you know an angle that works well for me might not work well for everyone and if I go any further back the camera's gonna fall off the desk but, you know as it goes Yeah, I know. The, the few photos I've seen of Steven's miniature painting, man, Steven's good. Steven's really good. The insides of gorilla mouths are scary. Yeah, no. They got some big teeth, yo. Oh, got a little paint on myself. I don't know when that happened. My guess is given the color difference, like drastic, drastic color difference in uh, their outer skin compared to their mouths, um, to get that level of pink, it's probably pretty thin skin. So we get to see a lot more of their, um, their blood vessels. So like their capillaries and stuff. And uh, one of the things I was finding out is when um, looking at some of the references, um, their skin is just phenomenal. Um, so recently, because I want to be able to do more than just paint white people, like it, I find it kind of weird when you see like all of a person's minis are just white but like at the same time because this isn't my skin color you know i can't really look in the mirror and so i have to use a lot of online references follow tutorials um and one thing that i've kind of learned that's really cool is because i want to grow as a painter right um i i just consider myself an amateur that's like i i want to i, I enjoy it i want to get better um you know so i'm taking steps to taking it a little bit more seriously as we go along but the darker a skin tone is the more it reflects the colors of its environment um, because as we know uh, lighter colors white and the like reflect all color spectrums but um, what's really cool is that the darker a color is, the more it kind of holds on to those colors. So the more you, you know, blast something like, let's say a black sphere with just blue light, the highlights are gonna be more blue. 
Um, whereas with something that is a lighter color, uh, you know, extreme opposite white, it's not going to be so blue um, because it's it's repelling those colors rather than holding on to them. So I thought that was super cool stuff to find out. Um, so going back here, so we've got already a little bit of color going on. Um, we only have our first layer on the inside of the mouth. Um, eyes are dry by now. So I'm going to take my fur brown um, that I put on the palette. And it's going to give a little, little dot. Uh, check the flow there. Boop. Cool. So Hope I didn't make it too cross-eyed. Um, no, let's see here. Can we get the eyes to face in? Yeah, so we can see those uh, bright brown eyes. I'm gonna try and make that a little bigger if I can. But now that we've kind of done the eyes, I can just work around everywhere else and I can just ignore it. So I don't have to worry about having a colored area and then going into the eyes last, which is how myself and a lot of people like instinctively try to do it um and then you just end up fucking up all the paint that's in the, the surrounding areas so that's dope i'm happy with that um and mikey i don't know if you, i told you or if you saw in my i actually don't think i mentioned on twitter um i if anyone wants to take a look at some of the other minis I've painted, I've been posting them up on Instagram. Just because, like, whenever I'm talking with my coworkers, like, and I'm like, oh, I was painting this thing recently. And then, you know, in a real life situation that is the regular world, they'd be like, oh, cool. Do you got a picture I can see? And then I got to go through my phone or I've got to try scrolling through my Twitter. So I finally made an Instagram. Um, so it should be pretty easy to find. I tried to make it name it as similar as to the Twitch stream as I could. Um, it's just Chris underscore BCG. Let's see here. khaki in his mouth. Sounds like caca. It's got a khaki mouth. Maybe it's a disease. There we go. Yep, just looking at it how it is, it's already looking a little terrifying, especially with those eyes. It's like uh, an evil white ape. Which I guess is just a yeti. So, done those areas. Um, now that that brown has more or less dried, where's that pen? So, trick that I learned from a YouTuber named Age of Squigmar is you just take a little pigment 0 0.005 pen and what you can do is you can do pupils with it that's a little bit uh, easier boop Uh, I've kind of fucked it up. 
Okay, that happens. There we go. Kind of fixed it. Eh. That's alright. I mean, it already looks a bit better than I could have done in the past, so let's see here. No, let's kind of see the people there. The brown pops a bit more though, so that's what we want. All right, so um, starting here, looking at the highlights and the references I was using, what I'm going to end up doing here, because I want to take a photo of just like what the highlights were here before I start going over them, because I'm going to be going over a lot of it with black, um, just for the bottom legs where the light is the lowest. So, let's see here. If I do that, when I'm going over it, I have myself a little bit of a guide. Because I'm going to want that. So, uh, what we could do, maybe we can start with the skin on the chest. So, um, as I did with Pulgasaur. I'm going to use the sample highlight as I had as a guide. So in my references, um, the under areas are real. They genuinely are a pure black. So I'm just going to go over. Um, it sounds redundant, but I'm going to go over black with black. Um, and then I'm just going to make a slow gradient here. So let's see. Maybe I could start off with. No, it's usually better to go with from darks to lights. Cool. So one black blob. All right, so. Get a little of the excess off my brush. So, thinking about giant apes as a D&D &D monster, what could we do? Well, thinking about it game design-wise, you know, thinking about references and pop culture and stuff, it is kind of cool that um, if you look at... Still got a little bit of allergies. Here, you know what? I'm going to be right back. I'm just going to blow my nose. I'll keep talking about giant apes as a monster in a second. So there we go. I'm back. Oh, who we got here? Dyslexic Lemon. Are you? Uh, yeah, kind of like a King Kong. Um, I can't remember. Is that you, Dave? I can't remember. Um, but yeah. So what we're doing is we're working on a giant ape. So like a King Kong. That's more or less what King Kong is. And um, where was I? I was going to. forward that jewels lemon and lime oh my god you're totally right i did i just realized that we've got lemons and limes in the stream 
How wonderful. It's lemon and lime time. Um, yeah, no, so I was just talking about uh, how you could possibly use sour stuff in the chat. <laughs> um, I was just talking about how you could possibly use, you know, something like a giant ape in your D&D games. So just thinking about that there, um, if I recall correctly in, I think it's Peter Jackson's King Kong, there was the, you know, very influenced by the original, um, there was the island of quote unquote monsters, but it had King Kong there, it had dinosaurs, um, you know, so if you're playing like a D and D game, um, where, well, where is it that Temple of Annihilation takes place again, Mikey? Uh, I want to say Jund or Jund, but that's a Magic: The Gathering location. Uh, can't remember. Someone able to Google that? Anyways, uh, Peter Jackson King Kong was a bit of over the top cinematic, but it would make yeah exactly right. Like you've got this island where you know maybe there's a local indigenous tribe, and you know they're very wary of. You know, they, they know the dangers of the island. And so essentially what they've done is they've kind of allied themselves in essentially pampering um, what is the safest giant monster um, on the island. In this case, the giant ape. Um, because the giant ape will protect them against the carnivorous things such as, you know, the tyrannosauruses or like other absurd giant monsters that the island might have so you know and obviously the humans they will end up sharing their food with the giant ape uh basically giving the giant ape an incentive to you know protect these people alongside itself um have a little bit of a symbiotic relationship um, I haven't seen the, the movie, to be totally honest, but I remember the trailers, and I remember there was a dope-ass T-Rex, and if I recall, like, there was the scene, I, I, I could be making this up, maybe this is something for, from a different movie, but, um, where he grabs, like, the T-Rex's jaws and just basically snaps it open, that might be from something else, um, but, you know, you could have so many cool things like that, um, if you're you wanting to use a giant ape in a D and D game, it it could be part of the story narrative rather than simply, you know, a big monster that your druid sees and is like, cool, I'm gonna wild shape into that, or I'm gonna polymorph people into that. Now I want to start a new campaign. Darn it, I don't have that kind of time. <laughs> yeah, no, no, totally. Um, man, I, basically when I'm painting these, I, I really wanted to like, you know, brainstorm, like, how could I use this? Like, I've got this mini. I'll, now, realistically, to be totally honest, I have this mini. I picked it up because I was like, well, if I end up ever having a wizard with a high enough level of polymorph or wild shape, I'm probably going to want to have one of these on hand. So... <laughs> <laughs> it was part of it was uh you know out of preparation of what those darn players do but yeah no um it's good it's good i i like the idea of it i like the idea of like a you know an isolated island where you know in the prehistoric times or whatever like 
things never got smaller. They never made it to the modern size. Like, they thrived and they stayed big. You know, the lizards never shrunk, the bugs never shrunk. Everything's just big. So, you've got this party that feels small, and in order to survive, they have to find things like their own King Kong. Um, that kind of stuff's really cool. It just, I, I'm, I'm a sucker for that. I, I also just really like big creatures. I find them to be very fun. Um, I forgot to message John to tell him I was online. There we go. Let John know. So, um, yeah, but yeah, it's nice to have you join in, uh, Dyslexic Lemon. I, I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoy the, the stream. Let's see here. Um, so I just want to keep going into where the darkest spots are with uh, this black, just so we have a bit of a starting baseline point. Yeah, what, what is your guys' uh, kind of favorite trope for monsters? I mean, my my true true forever love uh, in the monster manual is always going to be the goblin family. Um, largely due to my origins with Magic the Gathering. But my second favorite is just big things. really like them big monsters. Mostly play sci-fi uh, tabletop RPGs, but it would be fun to have my players crash land on a planet like that yeah exactly you could do something like that right um sci-fi it's it's basically the equivalent of like planar hopping in like you know fantasy uh dungeons and dragons if you're if you're doing that right um the way i i typically consider both in terms of like fantasy or for sci-fi when doing world building is like another continent another country um you know a new planet in sci-fi like they're, they're the exact same right like it's a area that we haven't been and oh. <coughs> <sighs> pardon me sorry got a little bit of allergies um but you know if you if you want another country or another continent to truly feel different, it's super easy to do that. Just um, and planets are no different. Um, allergies, bless you, bless. Thank you, thank you, guys. Um, yeah, no. Uh, so, like for my for my game, I've got four primary continents, and you know I might add more later, but. As far as the party knows, there is only four. Um, there's the one that they're in, which is super just basic, like, Chul. That's the name of it. I was trying to remember Chul. Anyways. Um, what I was saying. Continents. Planets. Making them alien. Um, so my players know of four continents, one in the northeast, one in the northwest, uh, one in the southeast, one in the southwest. So they reside in the northwestern continent, which is basically your typical fantasy. It's kind of North America-ish. It's got, you know, all four seasons in extreme, uh, you know, in, in extremes. You know, you go north, it's you got your tundras, you got your mountains, um, that kind of deal. But to the south of it, um, a little bit more, you know, South America-ish E, but it's super elemental involved. I am a huge fan of Avatar The Last Airbender and The Legend of Korra, and I kind of wanted to tie together elemental evil with, like, Avatar, uh, make these locations that are very, um, you know, they're they're not so much based off of the race but like this is a 
city or civilization that uses earth magic. This is a civilization that uses fire magic, and all of them overlook these portals to the elemental planes. Every year they perform this ritual that, you know, need not be disturbed to keep those planes, uh, planar gates sealed. And obviously when that is about to be disrupted, those gates open up. Now, as is, the gates aren't fully closed. The magic of the elemental planes bleed into these areas. The small creatures come out and, you know, there's guards and the likes to keep them under control. The, the ceiling of it, of those gates, is to keep the big things out. Um, so that's how I did that. Um, so if we ever do a elemental evil campaign that's the continent but if in a sci-fi game you could just as easily make that a planet right um, it's isolated from the rest of the thematic locations so that's what I, why i feel um you know i i used to get really worried about like wanting to do a sci-fi game and not and, and, and just end up never tackling it. But if you treat them like continents, it's just totally all right. Um, a sci-fi staff and our kind of campaign currently, maybe our next planet will be Skull Island. Yes, I'm currently world building for future session. I love it. I love that. Yeah, no, you could totally have that be... Um, a planet just everything's giant um, and there's um, actually I think um, if you haven't already there's a I think a trilogy of a sci-fi Godzilla series where they go to a planet and they find out that it's the like the original earth and Godzilla lives there you could totally do something like that right like that's absolutely ah Stargate okay that's yeah, totally acceptable to do stuff like that <clears throat> all right i know i'm just painting black on blackish areas so it doesn't look like i'm doing a whole heck of a lot here but um just kind of dramatizing those dark areas so that i can go and highlight them with slightly lighter colors Now, it's always fun to talk about D&D, yo, or other RPGs, you know, whether it's Dungeons and Dragons or if it's um, Shadows of the Demon Lord, uh, Savage World, or Savage Worlds, you know. We're talking about world building and monsters, sign me up. Yeah, how would you? What are some of the ways that you guys would handle uh, or take on a giant ape in your world building or your stories? Like, obviously, King Kong's the the most, uh, you know, first uh, thing that most of us will come up to think with. But uh, I'd love to hear what else uh, you guys have in mind. Um, like, would you? maybe find a what appears to be a gorilla but is actually a baby giant ape and now you have to do a you know mission to try and find its mother and return it to it right or else she goes to the closest village on a rampage and she's destroying everything not necessarily evil but 
how long have I been painting? Um, like how long have I been painting the ape or how long in general? I started uh, painting initially miniatures in uh, maybe about like 10 years ago. Um, but it's always been a very on and off thing for me. So like initially, let's see here. I think I even have one like within hand's reach. Uh, I thought I did. I started off when my college friends introduced me into Warhammer uh, 40k and I was like, oh, Warhammer 40k is cool. And they're like, yeah, you can paint and stuff. And I was like, painting? Oh, I, I haven't done like anything crafty or artistic in a long time. This, you know, sounds cool. Sign me up. So that got me into that. And then you know, I painted on and off for a couple of years. And then about a year or two ago again, because um, I, I didn't end up painting for a very long period of time. Um, you know, a year or two ago, I started painting again casually because I started getting into Dungeons and Dragons. And I was like, oh man, painting. I haven't done painting in a long time. I love painting. And I, I really like having like a monster on the table. So, you know, what, what it, the, the solution seemed obvious to me. Um, I would get back into painting and, you know, find my minis. Now, um, that being said, I mean, obviously there are pre-painted minis and stuff, but I find WizKids minis are they're they're hit and miss um some of the sculpts are really cool but i find that the quality you find some of them do i have an example on my table here what is this that's skeleton that's a skeleton i restart restarted here we go like uh repainted minis yeah the pre-painted minis aren't quite the quality right so like we've got this guy here um I mean, if you've got like 50 minis like this out on the table, like that, it, it works. Like they, they all fit in really well. But um, these factory painted ones, like they end up having like, I find a lot of black spots. Um, and something I found out, because I've tried, um, I've tried stripping the paint off of these. Uh, they don't strip. So like, and if you, like you actually have to like try and, scrape off the paint on them but when you do that you find the paint doesn't actually really strip off very well like it's it's fused to the plastic it's it's quite impressive um and actually i'm finding out now this one here specifically is made of a see-through plastic wasn't that cool Look at that, see-through. Neat. Um, so yeah, I I try to repaint them when I can. Um, I've got a army of gray unpainted miniatures, so before I kind of tackle too many of those, I kind of should, um, you know, handle some of the ones that come unpainted. But yeah, if you want to see um, some examples of like some of the painting, I've tried stripping. I, oh yeah, so uh, it. I I had um, I posted up on my Twitter because my experiences with stripping like this was a brand new thing to me. I got a ultrasonic cleaner, and I was like, cool, I'm going to. Uh, basically just record my experience trying to strip minis for the first time because I know for some people like myself this was a brand new thing um, and I didn't really like all I had was like forums to go off of and like maybe a YouTube video or two so I was like cool I've got these minis I've got this, uh, like ones that I did a bad job with that I wanted to redo um, and a couple of pre-painted minis. So I took my ultrasonic cleaner. I took some uh, 
what is it super green uh green clean i i can't remember the name of it for life of me right now um i want to say super green or simple green that's what it is a simple green so i threw those in and the ones that i did a personal paint job of that you know weren't as great as i would like um they stripped perfectly but interestingly all of the pre-painted ones they didn't strip whatsoever no matter how long i put them in there so what that suggests to me is the process or either the paints that they're using or whichever it is seems to chemically bond with the plastic so it's not just um paint it's not an acrylic paint that they're using uh, from what i can tell so i thought that was really cool that was interesting science experiment right um but yeah no i that was my experience with that um for paint stripping i just found an ultrasonic cleaner online uh, i heard some people used ultrasonics because like I'd heard about paint stripping and I was like, oh man, that sounds cool and sounds worthwhile, but it takes so long and I have to scrub it for like five or 10 minutes. No way, I'm not doing that. There's gotta be a better way. So if you ever wanna try paint stripping, I totally super strongly advise trying out an ultrasonic cleaner. I think it is worth the money. Um, if you're, I don't know so much if the, name brand would matter but what you do want to make sure is check the measurements just make sure that the minis that you want to put in um, will fit so the one i i was basically making sure that they have like six inches or so to them um so that i could fit larger models like this giant ape or my you know some of my giants that i did a little early on and I wasn't super happy or excited with. Um, and if you ever want to take a look at some of my other minis, like ones that I've actually finished instead of I'm doing right now, um, as I was mentioning earlier, I recently set up a Instagram gallery, so you should be able to find it pretty easily. It's just Chris underscore BCG similarly to my twitch channel so super thankful to have you join in though it's nice to have someone new to talk with I have Drukari army I need to strip. I'm nervous because I've never done it. Yeah, no, that's exactly how I felt about paint stripping before. Um, so when I was using my ultrasonic cleaner, I filled it like maybe an inch or two with simple green um, and then filled the rest with water and I ran it for one long session took a look, um, tried brushing the paint off, seeing how it worked. Um, I would recommend, you can find these on Amazon. Um, you could use a regular toothbrush, but this is actually a smoker's toothbrush. You won't find them in um, like your shopper's drug mart or your grocery store, because these are actually super bad for your teeth. Um, but like that's the level of force here. Like I'm actually having to apply a fair bit of force. If I lightly brush it, you notice that they don't um, brush too much. But if I grab like a soft toothbrush, same amount of force ends up pulling the whole bristles. But if I use that much here, like I actually have to really apply a lot of force. Um, you can hopefully hear the difference so that's a soft brush and that's the hard brush so just to give you an idea like if i brush this on my skin it's not going to be a very happy time 
are frail pieces, so I worry about too much force. Okay, so if they're frail, um, I would not use the smoker's uh, toothbrush. Like if they're like thin little pieces like that. Um, when I did, when I did about two or three cycles, are they resin or are they plastic? I should ask that. Um, one of the models I did was, I'll pull it out here. Okay. So it's a mixture of resin and plastic. Okay. So this was one of the pieces that I had stripped. Um, so these are not frail. Uh, WizKids uses pretty soft plastic. Obviously resin wouldn't be easily comparable. Um, but when I pulled these out before using a brush, a lot of the time I check to see like with my nail, like could I just peel off or scratch the plastic? Um, some of them fall off pretty easily. So I ended up grabbing the ultrasonic cleaner because lately I've just been using pre-primed minis and I sometimes the primer is gloppy, so I wanted to remove it. Um, so if you plan on using it a fair bit, I would say an ultrasonic cleaner is the way to go. Um, especially since you wouldn't have to use nearly as much force. Like a lot of these, I ended up just being able to just like rub off with my finger um, with the use of it. So, you know, uh, take it for what it's worth. I think that it would overall be less damaging to use the ultrasonic cleaner method but um you know if you give it a shot let me know right like i'd love to find out could i put a link up yeah yeah if you want so here um i'll link you the one that i actually bought um i just got mine through amazon but yeah, if you want to put in like a link of like one that you're looking at, like, yeah, go for it. I, I'm i not too strict about it. It's just as long as it's, you know, not too sketchy looking. But let's see here. Oh, my goodness. Uh, it's hard to type on my keyboard with all these bottles of paint in front of it. There we go. So this is the one that I picked up. So that's the, I, I live in Canada, so I use that one. Um, I don't think that there's a, let's see here, uh, amazon.com. Hey, no worries, yeah. Um, let's see here. I'm trying to see if I can find an Amazon.com equivalent for that exact model. Um, but that's the one that I like just because of the size measurements. Here we go. This looks like this is the one for... It, it matches up. It looks like it's a different brand. It's probably just a knockoff. Honestly, I wasn't too picky on the brand when I got mine. Um, so if you want an Amazon.com instead of the Canadian version, that's uh, the link there. Um, based off what I can tell, the brands don't seem to matter too much, but um, yeah, I used mine and it worked great. Uh, and the one that I just linked to, the second one, seems to be the exact same. I honestly have no idea if the one that I bought is just a, um, you know, one of those uh, cases where it's the same model under 10 different uh, brand names. So I hope that helps. I'm, I'm always happy to help out with that. Where did I put my brush? There we go. I 
But yeah, no, uh, for sci-fi, I, I love sci-fi stuff. I have a cousin who has never really played role-playing games and yeah but she's a huge 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 star wars fan so me and my partner were hoping we can uh get her into a star wars uh fantasy flight uh what is it force and destiny game definitely helps i don't love the force and destiny dice but i love star wars yeah no the force and destiny dice are a little bit um it, it feels like it, it would be a lot of what does this mean again i can't remember um what we might do is there's this super cool fifth edition star wars uh fan-made thing um i think it's just it's like sw5e is what they call it or less um totally free pdf um download just using like the fan content policies and stuff um so that seems like it could be cool be less of a learning hurdle for myself too because i mean ideally you want to know how to play a game before teaching someone else how to do it but i would love to sit in on a game if other people were running it for uh, force and destiny you know what okay these lower ones i'm just gonna go through with these I'll highlight them individually. I've got reference photos I've got, so. I don't feel like doing a million tiny strokes. I play Starfinder and it's pretty cool stuff. How is Starfinder? I, I've i never played it. Um, so when I first got into role-playing games, my first one was in the what was it mid 2000s early 2000s uh with third edition uh not 3.5 third edition 3.5 hadn't come out yet and man oh man was it difficult for me i i i, I had such a hard time um figuring things out because of all the number crunching that was in third edition um i ended up dropping it not because of the difficulty but because of the group of people i was playing with but years later um start dating my, my my lovely partner and she's like i've got a group of friends we play dungeons and dragons or Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Second Edition. Do you want to join our game? And I was like, Well, heck, that sounds really cool. Um, I was hesitant at first because I was like, Oh, but you guys have already got your game running on. Like, I can't just jump in. Like, that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be right. Um, you know, you've got your established thing. It would be weird to throw in just another person. And they're like, no, 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 do it. And, you know, I, over a long period of time, I ended up, uh, I eventually gave in and I joined. And, man, it was so fun. I would play second edition D&D before I would play 3.5. Um, but now that I have this, you know, baseline knowledge to go off of, 
I would probably play. Uh, I would give Pathfinder or uh, Starfinder a shot. Um, that's actually one of the few books I don't have on my shelf, but I would totally give it a shot. I'm especially finding the aspect of less number crunching very appealing. Because my god, third edition was crunchy as hell. Too much crunch. All right, so. Yep. Boop. Starfinder is great, but Space Combat is like a separate game in itself. I I think that there's a mixed um, opinion on whether or, or not that should be the case. Um, just like in the terms of schools of thought. Not saying that I have any stance on it myself. Um, it's kind of the same as like with naval combat or like vehicle combat and anything. It's like, all right, how separate of a rule set do we make this, right? Um, I think there's a lot of benefits of having it being, uh, you know, totally different set of mechanics. In fifth edition with the vehicle rules, based off of my understanding of them, I could have my own misunderstandings. Um, it's uh, It seems pretty cool. I like the idea that, uh, you know, certain aspects of the ship require different people to control um i have heard there were some decisions that maybe shouldn't have been done and have been uh were corrected in descent into avernus something about captains taking more of a role in the combat than the rest of the crew but uh you know it's all part of the learning process right um design is just like that so right now very tediously just over some of the um larger fluffs of hair i'm just giving them uh undercoats just some shading um looks like garbage right now it will get better as i start to do highlights In mini painting, I often find the very beginning parts always are going to look the worst. Um, you know, so like right here, I can see on the camera, uh, it looks a fair bit different than what I'm seeing here. It just looks like uh, something that hopped out of a comic book. But um, I assure you, it looks a little bit better in person, and it will just look better as we add on some highlights. I think the white on top is making it look a little more drastic than it actually is. How's your painting going, Chris? Say, hey, Mike, I'm lurking, so I'm jumping in out. It's all right. Do that butt. <laughs> yep, no, we're doing a little bit of shading on the butt. Just just for you, Mikey, I'll uh, I'll find a, a little spot there. Just a little bit of a little bit of butt brushing. Uh, do I airbrush as well? I have an airbrush um, as well as a compressor. I have so I have the um, the equipment to do so. However, I don't really have a station set up for airbrushing at this time. Um, I'm a little limited on the space. So ideally, I would be happiest to have a dedicated space for my airbrushing. Um, so to answer, do I? Uh, kinda. I, I kind of airbrush. <laughs> right now I don't. There you go, Mikey. Some monkey butt. So shaded and butt brushing. 
<laughs> well, I'm glad you're enjoying the butt part. You requested this model. <laughs> All right. So, a little bit there. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it before. So I've got uh, these other monkeys, or not monkeys, gorillas that I did. Um, and I really g regret that I did not model a tie for this one and paint him brown so I could have uh, my own Donkey Kong. Yeah, in terms of airbrushing, I have this giant Cthulhu um, from the game Cthulhu Death May Die. It's sitting over there. It's about the size of a small toddler. And for that, I'm going to have to do airbrushing, um, at least at the beginning. So you can go in with details afterwards. Um, with a model like this ape, I would have liked having an airbrush um, to start off, but for like those highlights, I would, I would still end up uh, hand brushing most of them. I'm a little bit stubborn. All right, There's a little bit more of that there. Just create some contrast for later on it's all about that contrast and these parts um, I don't really want to jump in too much because that's a super bright area and this black is too dark for that I think I'm about done with my darkest black so here ah, just cross reference this here this is the chest portion so what is this boat yeah that's about that okay let's take a look at that and do some chest um or I might prefer this one actually. Uh, let's see. It's always about what paint I have. is a nice color I think I'll go with this one all right so brush a bit of the excess off there we go so we've got that we're gonna just look at that there
So, um, no, just another little, little bit here. Um, just for total transparency, by no means am I um, an expert on mini painting or, you know, going to be able to say what the best way to do something is. So along the road here, I'm going to make mistakes here and there. And, uh, you know, there might be sometimes a better way of doing something. But I think that's kind of one of the best parts about this hobby is that, uh, you know, you can mi make mistakes and that's okay, right? It's all about uh, the learning process. Airbrushes are great for bigger models, but for the gorilla, I think I would, I would use it to find out where my... Yeah, no, exactly. That's um, With this, I ended up using just uh, spray cans to get the, the initial gradient in here. Um, totally agree. Um, I think... I think airbrushes are great for lighting and for creating um, gradients around smooth surfaces. But in the end of the day, what I start when I am using a airbrush, what I start with it, I always end up finishing it later with um, brush for details. But I can't deny they really, um, they get the job done. Um, they save so much time. And I find for myself, something that I often have a lot of struggles with is um, big round surfaces that are flat. So I'm hope hoping I don't struggle too much with the chest here. Obviously not finished, I just realized um, I didn't do the hands. Got to do the hands. Kind of want to take this step by step, but um, yeah. It's a it's a really nice model so far. When you look at the the model in the blister pack in, from Wizkids, I wasn't too thrilled about it. But as soon as I did a little bit of uh, you know Zenithal priming with rattle cans. Oh man, this model immediately looked much more exciting to paint. Oh, you finished a dragon with your airbrush. I love dragons. What kind of dragon model was it? Was it, was it from uh, from Reaper, from WizKids? Uh, was it a, a 3D print? Oh my god, yes. For the wings? Oh my god, wings are a pain in the butt um there's pathfinders oh the gargantuan um white dragon from WizKids. yes i like that model that is a very nice one it's got a good pose to it um if i recall correctly it's kind of balancing on its tail um i would have to double check but that is a model I've considered picking up a couple of times. I ended up getting the uh, the Pathfinder Gargantuan. Um, what you who's it? Uh, the Red Dragon. But I ended up attempting. Can't say I was successful. Um, attempting to turn it into a Emerald Dragon. Yeah, that's the one. It always so, it looks so silly when I do it like this, but it, I did this with uh, Lord Pulgasaur. If you want, I can show you that in just a second here. Um, and it turned out really well using uh, the Zenithal, just kind of as a painting guide for brush painting. 
Pain in My Dragon. Um, buyback Scales with... Oh, Black Scales with Blue Highlights. Oh, that sounds wonderful. I love stuff like that. Um, there is a smaller Cthulhu model that I have from the Death May Die game. Here, you know what? I'll, I'll share a couple models I've done recently. Um, just as soon as I finish up this hand here. But... I started it in February, and I have been painting almost nonstop this last three months. And I've learned a lot of good, uh, you know, details. One thing I always struggled with, and I think a lot of new painters always struggle with, is being really bold with your highlights. Um, so I was revisiting the model and was giving um, more of like a yellowish highlight i'll pull it out um so because before i was doing that it felt a bit flat so let's see here yeah so okay so now that i'm seeing that i have a model with colors i'm seeing that i actually need to change my um, exposure levels here so I can get a little bit more accurate there we go so yeah oh yeah contrast paints are great for that uh, let's see here speaking of contrast there we go a little bit more color sorry if it's gonna get a little weird here here we go so that's uh, no that's that's way too high just fiddling with my camera settings here. Need to increase the saturation, I think. I'm right next to a window, so whenever the lighting changes, it, uh, it's pretty drastic. But yeah, so just like in the hand here, uh, see if you can, I can point it in a way there. So you can see there's, it's a little bit more of a yellowish green on the highlights specifically like down here whereas when I turn it around uh, it's a little bit more blue just tr it's a little hard just on my camera it's not the greatest camera in the world to try and uh, show that but that's something that I've been uh, trying to revisit on some of my older models and then um, the technique I'm doing right now with using con uh, zenithal highlights to try and um, you know guide me here is the same thing that I did on this model here so what I did is taking some very deep uh, reds almost like a on a purplish hue and just painting the undersides which were black in my zenithal and then as I progressively go up uh, doing these red highlights with a almost like a orange hue and saturation this is a great model. I love this. This is <clears throat> this sculpt is from uh, Peterson Games. Uh, it comes from their game Planet Apocalypse, um, and they've the models have these really cool like summoning runes on the bottom. So I tried to take inspiration from Doom 2016's like loading screens, and really tried to make it look like they were like. Uh, fighter so this is a model that I am most happy with right now um, you know just given that it was yeah I think it's one of the best ones I've done to get so far so I'm hoping to use those same techniques on the fur here um, and just with the muscles so back to that but yeah that's uh, kind of what is going through my head right now and just the process that I'm doing this is something I've only been practicing for a while, so I'm hoping it turns out well. Man, P3 paints, this one color does not really like to stay together. Doesn't seem to like my wet palette either. There we go. So, um, I was doing the hand there, I did that. I think I'm going to do another 
pass over his chest. And that is not quite thin enough. Let's see here. There we go. daughter woke up so mostly be lurking well hey sounds good thank you so much i i mean i i'm it was wonderful getting to talk with you there dyslexic lemon um you know take care of your daughter there um you know yeah if you want to tag along if you want to get notifications give me a follow it was lovely to have you join me here and uh you know happy painting Take a look at my ape reference. Let's see here. No, nope, that's not what I'm looking for. Oh my goodness, the camera. It, that is, nope, 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 nope. Okay, gonna turn down that contrast, I think. What worked well for some of my models was bad for the monkey. My apologies here. I am trying to fix that right now. There we go. Turn that brightness down. Put the saturation back up so we can see color again. There we go. I can see the red of my skin. Kind of see that. I think this is okay. So sorry for that. Oh yeah. So what I was looking at there. Oh, good. You can see just how uh, yucky my uh, paper towel is there. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right. So, nope, not what the window I'm looking for. Ah, this is the window I was looking for. Yes. Here we go. All right. Gorilla mouth. You know what? Let's uh, do a second layer on the inside of that mouth there. Really get the recesses there. Oh, I didn't do the toesies. Oh, I will have to figure that out. All right, so I got that there. Am I happy with how those teeth look? Mostly. All right, so underside of that lip. for that. It's a little runny. A little too much water. There we go. Nope. Still not. There we go. Do that. That's okay. There we go. Let's see here. There we go. All right, perfect. Am I with the camera? 
focus there. Ah, the brightness though. Let's increase some exposure. There we go. Oof. That is not looking great on some of those areas, but that's okay. We want to get in as close to the teeth as we can without touching it. And the overbleed we will take care of afterwards. This base off the reference photo I'm looking at. The lips are quite black. Um, yeah, if they're not getting they're not facing upwards towards the light. And I'll just swipe off a little bit of that there. And then what about on the end, lower lip? All right, lower lip, you're gonna see a bit more of a dark, dark gray. So, similar to this up here. Cool. So, gonna do a bit of that there. Try to point it so you guys get to take a look. Nope, not doing a good job of that. Alright, let's see here. Nope, still not doing a good job. Here we go. Is that better? Nope, I've mucked it up again. All right, cool. So now that we've done that, you can see more clearly there's a couple gaps in the mouth. You just see a little bit of that white spots. So we're just going to go in, try to find the angle that works best, and just take care of those. Let's see that one right there, it's pretty big. Oh, look at that face. Angry, angry gorilla. So we got that there. Ah, that's right, the toes. I was talking about the toes earlier. All right, so uh, try this here. So we can here we can see the toes are kind of blending in with the rocks. So I'm just going to do a little bit of an outline with black, just for those lowest areas, just where the shadow would be. I know Xenophil didn't quite hit it, but um, the underside 
it's gonna be a little black so we're just gonna give it that shadow there So you can kind of see that now. Let's see here. Underside of the toes, at the heel. I keep calling just, I'm calling the whole foot the, the toes, which is not quite correct. Alrighty. them and then when I'm doing highlights later um, I can correct what's not supposed to be so dark but this will give a better contrast later on to separate the toes perfect so now going with the next darkest color that I've got on my palette Test uh, a little bit lighter. There we go. Yep. Don't want to do that. <sighs> Let's see here. Ooh, demo for new Hyrule Warriors is out. Yeah, I saw the... Me and mine were just watching that the other day. Or, um, not the other day, earlier today. It looks quite cool. Kind of nice that it's uh, very focused on Breath of the Wild and less uh, mix mashed. Probably not going to be fully canonical, but I have a suspicion that there's going to be aspects of it that are more canon. There we go. Oh, you've been playing the demo. Nice. Yeah, I think that's really cool. I, I like that. It's... And obviously, it's get, it gets the over-the-topness of, uh, 
you know, all Warriors games. So far, Impa is... Oh, okay, so, so they've got an... Oh, yeah, they have a, a young Impa. Um, before she was... Old and tiny. <clears throat> oh, I'll have to give it a shot. All right. So, next up on my chest palette... All right, so we're going to go with a more of a probably a uniform gray. Oof. Uh, let's see here. Does she play similarly to the Impa from the first Hyrule Warriors? a little bit easier to look at if I do it like that there we go That might be a little too spherical. <clears throat> Well, is she, is she magical or is she ninja-like? I'm a little confused. You've told me two slightly different things. Because ninja is more like... Are you, are you talking about like actual ninja or are you talking like Naruto ninja? Because when I think ninja, I just think like melee. Like lots of daggers and like silent ways to kill a person.
So, got that. Um, so they have the Sheikah Slate as a sub weapon. I do like how everyone uses it different ways. She's kind of, yeah, okay. <laughs> You're giving me a lot of uh, kind of, sort of, maybes. I'm not, I'm not getting a clear message of what she's like. So, is she? Is she more like? I guess it's like. Is she more like Shika from the first one? Is, is that what you mean? Because I'm, I'm getting the vibe that she's a bit more Shika esque than she is like Impa from uh, the last one. I mean, after this, I might go and download it. Yeah, she's more Sheikah-esque. Okay, cool, 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 cool. That's cool. I, I'm, I'm cool with them making her more uh, unique and not just carrying over the Impa from the last game. Although, the Impa from the last game was my favorite character. So, it's a little bit of a bummer, but, you know, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with uh, them exploring new avenues. Yeah. You know? their game don't like playing a Zelda though um, is she Zelda in Breath of the Wild wasn't much of a fighter, so I, I don't... Is, is she also like the Zelda from the last game, or is she more like... Like, what does she do? Like, what, what are her weapons? question have you gotten better at dodging <laughs> me and keith used to play uh hyrule warriors a lot so one of the challenges uh was always dodging not at all <laughs> sadly no her weapon is what is the sheikah slate like is that a sword is that like, when I'm thinking slate, I think, like, of a slate of rock. Like, just a, a big sheet of rock. It was a thing that you used in the main... Oh! The tablet. Okay. That's right. It was called a Sheikah Slate. I'm like, what the hell is a Sheikah Slate? I understand now. No, oh, that's not taking it off. Okay, I'm going to try this one. A little bit thicker, a little bit goopier. Goopy, goopy. All right. And we're gonna wash that off. Try to brush a little bit. We're just gonna pick up some of the excess paint there. So we don't want it to be hiding any details. There's a nice little fold right there. So I wanna make sure to keep that. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, no, that's that's kind of interesting. I don't know. I mean, I, I guess that's that's appropriate for what her character was in the game because I think the Sheikah slate that Link ends up using or getting was Zelda's, so that makes sense. from the camera once again. Sorry about that, guys. I'm not a very sit-still painter. So my apologies for those who are watching. There we go. Wet, a little transparent, that's good. We're just gonna highlight some of those areas. It's starting to look like gorilla. Less like an abominable snowman. Go over these details again. It's very bright, so we only want the brightest part to really be this color. Doing it again, I'm doing it again. Let's see here. There we go. Is that better? Yeah, that's better. Something about this part of the model is not really liking paint. So I'm wondering. I took the primer though. It's gonna have to be a little persistent with it. Here we go. So I got that. Clearly missed some of the hand bits, so just go in, slowly glaze. Mix up this fucking paint. Oh, try not to swear. to get a relatively complete gorilla hand here it's a little bright I'm gonna have to go in and I'm gonna progressively darken things up but um, you know getting where getting closer to the direction that I'm wanting to get with this um, you know, by glazing things over I can always address uh, you know potential color issues so to speak so that's a little, got that, I got that. Oh, you know what, that I think is not the top highlight because I did black and then that and then that, that's the third. 
What was the top highlight? The top highlight color was, there we go. That's right, it's like this mixed with a little bit of this. Uh, I could probably just go with this. So, got this here, which is a wolf gray from Vallejo. water. There we go. So that there is way too bright, but what we're going to do is we're going to wipe off the excess here, just in with some water, make that a glaze. Just kind of go in, try to blend it in and glaze it with its surrounding areas. And you know, full transparency, I have a really hard time with um, you know, flat, roundish surfaces, kind of like this gorilla's chest. So. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the slightly darker color. We're just going to kind of try, while it's still a little wet, just kind of blend in some of this. Um, wet blending, also not a skill that I'm very great at. But we try, you know? The important part is that we try. So yeah, now it kind of looks kind of silly. Like he's got, you know. What would I say? It's like, it's like uh, yeah. something that's not supposed to be like. So I'm gonna go in here, take in a little bit more of that. Go in. Probably detensify that a little bit. Is that, how wet are you? <sighs> that part I'm gonna have to let dry a little bit, I think. Uh, nope, I can just glaze over it. And that just takes down the intensity. So, once again, didn't hold it at quite the best angle, but uh, let's see here. It's just... Yeah, I think I want to pull it left a little bit. We're just gonna try to get it a little more natural looking. saturate that a little bit. Hope that works. Uh, not quite. Hmm. 
get to watch me fiddle around with this. Let's see here. I think what I might have to do is I might have to let that drive it. Um, I've brought it a little bit closer to what I'm wanting, but it's not quite there. Um, I think this area down here, using my reference, definitely too dark down there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of the lighter color here, try and check consistency there. Um, and I think that's part of what the problem is, is I've got too harsh of a transition. Because looking at a gorilla's chest, um, yeah, I've got one on my screen here. Let's see if I can uh, give a quick example. source let's see here it's called gorilla's chest in this preview so I'm gonna bring this down oh. is she here kind of go like that that like that so that's what I'm trying to get at there we go so <clears throat> now we want to have it a little dark in some of these areas here this this is okay to be dark but I don't want it to be so crazy dark okay. so basically I got my whole palette is just covered in glaze which is good because that's gonna help me out a lot here And so what we've got here is we've got a bright highlight. I'm not even going to clean off my brush. I'm just going to keep mucking around. That's dry. So we've got some more hairless areas around here. So we're gonna try and uh, give those a little bit of love. Those areas are gonna be a lot darker. So we're gonna start off more of this. Go over that. I'm going to try and work with what it looks right. So, now that I've got my reference up there, try and hold the mini in the right spot. Let's see here. You know what? I think what I need to do. There we go.
Ooh, that looks really harsh on the camera. Let's try to get that to match a little bit better with what it actually looks like. Because it is, mm, I guess it is a little bit much there. That's okay. I can take care of that. Here. Just keep taking a look at that there. Mix that up. Nice, nice, nice. Starting to get something that looks like a gorilla. So I'm just going to do that. <sighs> I think I do this every single time. I end up trying to use the Zenithal and I end up getting frustrated somewhere along lines and I just end up going to heck with it and kind of just cover over it because I want things to have paint on them. Not the greatest of habits, but you know, it's as it goes sometimes. So yeah, I think this is just too bright. I'm going to dull it down. There. Drop this here. Got a thumb looking th or, uh, thumb. I've got a thumb looking thumbnail. Got a fun looking thumbnail. And all this paint. That's okay. Guys, nah, no. Nail the image that. That's okay. And just a little bit of a. Uh, little bit of a highlight. Loving how this hand's looking right now, so we're just gonna go over some more dark colors here. I think the highlights are a little too bold. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just go over them with a little bit of dark color, kind of return to that baseline a little bit. Yeah, that's just how it goes. The first way didn't work out. And so uh, we'll just try again. And let's do that over and over until we like it. Get some of the 
paint on the face there now. We'll go look at that gorilla face there. Yeah, they don't have a lot of uh, highlights there. So I've got a palette here. So we're going to use really dark colors for just the absolute baseline. So time to go in, not be too shy about those dark colors. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm just gonna go in there, grab a little bit of that black and mix that in there. What do we got? We got a kind of a dark color. So gonna go in just into the cracks and crevices so and the nose all that again as always will be touched up as we're doing highlights this is just kind of help guide us yeah. maybe not ideal if we go over the lines but you know it happens we're not even gonna go over the whole face we're just gonna Go into those deep crevices where the light don't shine. Because we are painting shadow right now. Got that. Which face? You make uh you make this face? Or you make this face? Or that face. <laughs> Alright, so you know. It's looking a little angrier right now. So we've got uh all those dark shadows in there. This face is a little more, you know, exaggerated. Gorilla face. Yeah, but which gorilla faces? There's two gorilla faces. There's the, and there's the ah. Do you make the ah face when you wake up? Keith is just saying that uh, he makes that face when he wakes up. I'm trying to find out which face it is that he makes. So, uh, looking down here again, I'm just going to take a quick look at that. So I kind of want... What do I got for that? Uh, it's like a cross between this color. So I'm going to scoop that up there. My palette, just uh, make a bit of that. I'm gonna scoop a bit of a light color. I'm just gonna combine those two, and yeah, that's about light, about right. Cool. So, or maybe I could put in. You know, I'll just put in a little, just a bit of this. Um, so, what I was talking about earlier is darker skin tones because they absorb light. Um, they also reflect a lot more. So, um, with that in mind, here we can actually see that the face has a bit more blue to it. Um, and that there is a reflection from, uh, as we can see here, there is a clear sky um, <coughs> behind the gorilla. So, I'm using a little bit more of a bluish gray. Here. Um, so I'm just going to go in there. I'm just trying to tone that down using what we have on the, our palette. I like that. That's a nice color. So now I'll just dip in some of that. It's a very. Yeah, okay. Let's see here. Just how that brushes on. Brushes on nicely. And we're going to start going over this face. And this time now, we're going to be a lot more careful. Okay. 
get rid of a bit of that uh, black lipstick I kind of gave him there. So uh, not quite a goth boy, but you know he's uh, <clears throat> he does have black on the underside of his lips. Oof, going around these eyes is going to be tricky. We're really starting to get something that looks like a gorilla, which is kind of cool. Looks like a little bit like a 90s video game gorilla, but you know, that's more than it looked like earlier. So, happy with that. For anyone who does not know what I'm talking about, I'm referring to Primal Rage. Which was a uh, fighting game in the early 90s for the Super Nintendo and I want to say the Sega uh, Genesis as well. Yeah, I saw that th uh, there was a movie called Primal Rage. I, I, I'm I, very skeptical on... I, I don't know if Primal Rage, the movie, is based off of the video game, but I do know that it involves dinosaurs and animals. So for all I know, it is supposed to be based off the video game which is going to work as well as every other um you know overall terrible video game movie adaption now, not all of them are terrible there's a lot of really good ones but keith was just saying that uh he still needs to watch the video game adaption or not video game adaption the movie adaption uh, as there is a movie that I found out um, only a couple days ago named Primal Rage. In fact, I was very tempted to uh, paint this like Primal Rage. Ah, Jules, nice to see you joined uh, the chat. Uh, Vampire, I briefly thought you were talking about Winston's unit. Yeah, no, um, kind of looks like Winston. Did Winston have a unit called Primal Rage? I'm not terribly well familiar with the lore for Overwatch. Oh, his ult, his ultimate. I misread that. 
I'm sitting a little bit far away from the uh, the screen. So they were just uh, painting this um, gorilla. Let's see how well. There we go. Um, or giant ape. How are you doing today there, vampire? It's getting a little, it's pretty early there for you. It's, uh, what, 6 a.m. right now? Yeah, monkey gets very angry. Yes, he does. My favorite is the um, Christmas um, limited edition game of Yeti Hunt. Love Yeti Hunt. Yeti Hunt is super fun. <clears throat> I should go to sleep soon. 7.30. Have you been staying up this entire night? You haven't gone to sleep yet? My goodness game though <laughs> oh my heck well, are you are you gaming with uh people in the the west you must be if you're still up right now oh, that is too much i've i'm going to ruin those eyes that i spent so much time on there we go How's that looking? Not bad so far. Not bad, not bad. There we go. I'll go sleep soon after watching it for a bit. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in. It's lovely to have you. Just painting a monkey. Uh, yeah, <laughs> evidently. Is there just not enough people in the Australian server for you to play with? I'm guessing the answer is no. Most other players I come across are other Aussies, other night owls. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Uh, that's too bright still. Just highlight a little bit better, not so crazy bright. Oh, my paint is getting way too wet here.
Do the other Aussies cringe when you, you say uh, Gravy Daddy as well? Do, do you bless them with the that that new name? So this figure is going to be white, silver. Um, yeah, so the top's not quite done yet, but right now it, it's looking like a Yeti. Um, but no, it's uh, it's going to be a, a black gorilla. I only say that to my friends. Oh, I feel so blessed. I feel so blessed to hear that. Thank you for instilling that information on me. I, I shared it with my my had a similar reaction to me and said that she can never play him ever again. <laughs> I should totally bless them. You should bless them with the information of Grabby Daddy. Ugh. So gross. <laughs> Uh, you're a funny one. You're a funny one. I'm not sorry, honey. Of what? Gravity Daddy. Uh, I don't know if uh, Keith uh, Kairos plays... Um... Oh, no, that's right. You do play Overwatch. You do play Overwatch. The, the what's his face? The old guy villain Sig Sigmar. Um, and vampire calls him Gravy Daddy. Sigma, thank you. There we go. Do you feel blessed, Keith? Blessed with the knowledge of Gravity Daddy. You should. You've you've been given newfound uh, forbidden knowledge. <laughs> uh, hope that didn't peak the mic. Yes, yes. Such wonderful news. Oh, Gravy Daddy. Well, so much for PG-13 chat. The chat's gotten horny. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Jules, did you want to see the toddler-sized Cthulhu? I won't be putting it on this camera. It's going to have to be on the, the full-size camera. I am really liking how this is turning out. Yeah, you, but yeah, you say the word, I will carry the toddler over. Yes, toddler size Cthulhu. Perfect. All right. So, one day I will paint this. I was actually talking about this Cthulhu model uh, earlier in the stream, and that I would have to airbrush it. Uh, I hope there's nothing on it. Let's see. Luckily, it's hollow, so it's not too heavy. But this is it. So for comparison size, like its hands are like, it's huge. 
um, compared to the gorilla that I am painting right now. So I'm going to put the gorilla down. I'll go put this back. Ugh. Oh, God. <clears throat> yep. Extra chunk. All right. And this, this gorilla looks so large too when I'm, I'm painting it here compared to like, you know, an adventurer. This is a tight area. Where, how am I gonna get in there? Alrighty. Get inside there a little bit. 